Hello folks, welcome back and welcome to lecture 19. You have done quite a bit of stuff by now and you should be getting a pretty good handle of Excel. So congratulations. However, we're not quite there yet. In this video, you're about to learn how to combine two functions to enhance or I should say to solve a more complex multi-conditional decision-making problem. The two functions that we're going to show you how to combine are the if function and the and function. Excited to start? Let's get this ball rolling. Okay, so here's the structure of this lecture. We're going to start off the lecture with a scenario analysis as per usual. We'll then give you an illustration on Excel and examine the if and and combination so that you gain a better understanding of this technique. And before we end the lecture, we're going to run through the exercise for this lecture. Let's get this started. Let's revisit the car hunting scenario. This time, however, you'll have two variables or conditions that you need to factor into your decision making. The first is the type of the car. The second is your budget. The ideal car for you is a car, not a truck. And the second condition is it has to cost less than or equal to 25,000. Let's take this to Excel to give you a better illustration of how we can easily perform this to come true a massive data set. So we have two tables here. The first is the list of all the new vehicle models. And we've got about roughly 4,300 car models listed in this table. It's massive. The second is the two criteria or conditions of our car hunt. Don't get too fixated to the syntax as we will examine this in greater details shortly. Okay, so I'm going to type the function in cell G3. Basically, what we need Excel to do here is to tell us whether or not these cars in table 1 meet our two criteria. If the two criteria are met, we want Excel to mark it as potential. If not, we want Excel to mark it as not. Okay, so let's finish typing in this function. Excellent, let's drag it down. Bam, as you can see, this can be super helpful, particularly to come through a massive data set. The combination of if and and functions has a dynamic number of arguments. Basically, the more the number of conditions, the more the number of arguments. Let's revisit our example from earlier in this lecture. In the two condition scenario, the syntax is as follow. You'll notice here that we've got two logical tests. Here, each one is associated with a condition. Our conditions for this illustration are 1. The cars must be less or equal to our budget, 25,000. Second, the vehicle type that we'd like to purchase is a car, not a truck. Now, let's take a closer look at the function in cell G3. Our first logical test says F3 less than or equal to I3. This I3 cell reference is absolute, which explains the dollar signs around it. So F3 is our price cell in table 1 and I3 is our budget cell in table 2. Basically, this is comparing the price against our budget. Remember, our first condition is to shortlist the cars that are priced under or equal to 25,000. Moving on, our second logical test says E3 equal to J3. Again, this J3 cell reference is absolute. Okay, so this particular logical test is comparing the text in cell A3 with the text in cell J3. The fecal types in column E in table 1 with the fecal type that we need in cell J3, table 2. Car. The next argument is the value, the value if true. If both conditions are met, we need Excel to mark this as potential. Therefore, you see the word potential in between these two sets of double quotation marks. Remember, the two sets of double quotation marks are used when you wish to hard code a text or string. The last argument is the value if false. 
If any one of these conditions or both of the conditions are not met, we need Excel to mark it as not. Therefore, you see the word not in between these two sets of double quotation marks. Okay, so great. We've gone through the entire syntax of this technique. Must be a lot simpler than what you thought, huh? Okay, so let's now talk about the exercise for this lecture. In this exercise, your task is to account for four conditions in shortlisting your list of potential cars. The four conditions are 1. The vehicle type 2nd. The budget 3rd. The transmission type and 4th. The drive system type Because we've got four conditions here, you need to ensure that your if and and combination accommodates all four conditions. Once you've completed the exercise, use your findings to complete the quiz. Okay, so that's about it for this lecture. Thank you for watching and see you in the next video.